Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing my November TBR. November is a very exciting month. A lot of stuff will be happening, especially readathons. In November I plan on participating in at least three readathons. I'm definitely going from extreme to extreme. In October I read whatever I wanted. I did not participate in any readathons at all. And now in November I'm getting right back into the readathons. Apologies if there's a slight echo. I'm still waiting for my sofa. It's arriving in two days and I do think that once that one has arrived the sound will be better and it won't be as echoey in, in this room. As I said I plan on participating in three different readathons and I also want to randomize my TBR. This is a thing I do sometimes where I just pull up a random number generator and pick what books to read from different categories. My approach will be that I first will randomize the books I need to read and then I will try and fit them in to the readathons I plan on participating in. There are in total three readathons that I hope to participate in. The first one is the Pokemon Athon, which is hosted by my lovely friend Jane from the Bookaholic. And this is a readathon to celebrate the release of a new Pokemon game coming in November. I'll be honest, I know nothing about Pokemon games, but I appreciate Pokemon and I appreciate Yay <laughs> and readathons. What's exciting is that I'm actually one of the team leaders for this readathon. Jane has this like she has planned out this amazing readathon with like teams and multiple prompts and like you're leveling up. So many good things are going on in this readathon. So even if you don't really know about Pokemon or stuff, like yours truly, you can definitely still participate. I'll be representing Team Turtwig slash Team Grass together with Max from Max Reads. And this will be so much fun. There are team specific prompts and there are main prompts and there will be live sprints. Jane has just done such an amazing job. So please check out the Readathon announcement, check out Jane's channel. There's a Discord, there's a Twitter, there's graphics. I will link everything down below. Come hang out with us. It will be such a good time in November. Forgot to mention the Readathon will be happening between the 1st and the 18th of November. So it's not for a full month, it's for 18 days because on the 18th or the 19th the game is released. The second readathon I plan on participating in is the Desertathon. Not only Desertathon this time, this one is called Desertathon Journey to the Sun and this one is hosted by Esme from Bookish Buddies, another one of my dear friends. She has previously hosted like a month long edition of the Desertathon. This one is just a two week long edition that will be happening between the 1st and the 14th of November. It actually coincides with the Pokemonathon, but you can definitely make sure that the books you read works with both readathons. Then the third readathon that I'm interested in participating in is the Squash That Series readathon, weekend edition. So it's a short readathon focused on continuing to read series. This one is being hosted by Kayla Ray Reads and Is Bailey Reading. And this one will be happening from the 19th of November until the 21st. Basically 72 hours, I think, where the goal is to fill out a bingo board that they have and just make sure that you're doing some progress on the series that you're currently reading. I think we're all guilty of starting series and never really continuing with them or finishing them. So I feel like this is a great opportunity to focus on just that. I think that's all general information that you need to know about these readathons. I will link everyone's channels and like announcement videos, Twitter, stuff like that down below in the description box. It will be so much fun to be a team leader for a readathon. I'm very excited about that and grateful that Jane gave me the opportunity. Now I will just do the randomizing my TBR sort of thing. So I will now pick four books from four different categories. Then I'll have a little thinker, a little break where I'll figure out how to fit those randomized books into the prompts for the readathons. Let's go to the randomizing my TBR. So there are four categories I want to pick books from today. The first one is my physical TBR. The second one is my Goodreads want to read list. The third category is ARCs. And the fourth category is actually ebooks. The thing is, I have a few ebooks that I have bought previously or that have been free or something that I have on iBooks, and I never get to them because I keep forgetting about them. So I want to try and read at least one ebook in November. That's the goal. Probably two of them because all my ARCs are ebooks as well. So two books, two ebooks in November. So the first category is my physical TBR, and according to my notes, I have 63 books 
in total on my physical TBR at the moment. Which is insane, how did it grow so much? Oh, it's because I have library books. So I have included library books in this count. Also, just a very, very quick note. I have one book I must read in November, and that is The Obeliskate, which is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy the follow-up to the fifth season, which I'm currently reading. And the reason why I need to read this is because I'm currently hosting a read-along together with some booktube friends of mine, where we are reading the series. And for November, it's the second book in the series. I will also leave links to that read-along down below if you're interested in joining, because many of you mentioned that you have read the first book in the series, but you have not continued with it. This is the perfect opportunity for you to continue reading the series if you're interested. This one is also included in my physical TBR, like it's up here, I'm, I'm remembering it. As I was saying, from 1 to 63, from 1 to 63, I'm gonna press randomize, 3, 2, 1, 53, I have a bad feeling about this. You get to come along with me now as I look in my new shelves. The thing is, I just organized these shelves, so I actually don't really have any clue where my books are. I'm not really used to the setup, so I don't know instantly what book it will be. This is like my main TBR shelf, but I still have some books here I need to read. I have some books here, and then I have another shelf in another room. So we're just gonna start counting because I have no clue. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, that should be there, 44, yes, nothing here, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, it's this one. I thought that messy braid looked cute, but I quickly watched some of the footage and it didn't, so I took my hair out. The book that was randomly picked for my physical TBR was Beach Read by Emily Henry. This has been on my TBR before, and I never got to it. I think I read one chapter or something. This is a friend's book, so it's great that this one is being picked because I need to return it. It was the runner-up for the best romance on Goodreads last year. Many seems to love this one, and Emily Henry's other books as well. I'm excited to get to this one. I think it will be a good read for me. Like, it's a romance, it's a contemporary. Hopefully it will be enjoyable. From what I know, it's about these two authors that are both experiencing a writer's block and they decide to switch genres. Moving on, I need to be effective because we have a lot to do today. Next category is my Goodreads want to read list. According to my notes, I currently have 434 books on my Goodreads want to read list. Three, two, one, let's go. 377. This is my Goodreads want to read list according to the order that the books have been added. So it's gonna go until we find book 377. It's probably on this page. So we have a lot of contemporaries, thriller, a romance. Okay, I never know what I'm putting on my Goodreads list. So, okay, let's just go. So we meet again. Interesting, a romance. Why does it seem like November will be quite romance heavy? The Third category is ARCs, advanced readers copies. I have a problem where I usually request ARCs and then I don't read them, so it would be fair if I actually try and read one of the ARCs I receive and up my ratio on that galley. I have three active ARCs and nine inactive ARCs. They are inactive because I've never got to reading them and I don't have access to them anymore, so if I want to get rid of, of them from my net galley to-do list, I need to get them another way. So I'm actually gonna be kind to myself and allow me to just pick between the three currently active arcs and freaking make sure that I finish reading at least one of them before they go inactive and are archived so that I can actually review it and be a proper reader and reviewer for once. That is the goal indeed. We're just gonna do a number from one, two, three. Three, two, one. Two. These are my active books. As I said, I have some inactive ones as well I need to read, but to be kind and to actually be a good reviewer, I'm just looking at my active books. So, one, two. And the archive date is November 18th, so I need to read it before November 18th. So I also have a deadline. And it's another romance. A one-night stand, a random one-night stand, and then they meet again, and I guess a bit of enemies to lovers, or lovers to enemies, to lovers. The fourth and final category I want to pick a book from is my ebooks. According to my notes, I have 15 ebooks 
on my iBooks. <laughs> We're gonna pull a number from 1 to 15. 3, 2, 1. Book 13. I'm going to continue to screen record on my phone because here's where I have the easiest access to my books. 1, 2, 3, 4. Where are that? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30. <laughs> the Deal by L. Kennedy. And I'm actually so excited about this one. I heard so much about it. It's a smutty book. It's a college campus romance. I think it's about a hockey team. I've been meaning to read this for a while, for a year, I'm sure. Very interestingly, all of the books that were randomized for me are romances. I don't know if my TBR is trying to tell me something, but apparently I'll be reading a lot of romance in November. And now I'm gonna take some time to think and then I will get back to you with how my TBRs for all the readathons will look like. One hour later. It's been some time, I think perhaps an hour. I think I have figured out my TBR for all the readathons. I've gone through my books, I've tried to think of all the different like prompts and such and how to work things together. Unfortunately for me, the books that were picked for my randomized TBR game isn't really that much of an help. I'm still gonna read them, like of course they're on my TBR, but most likely during the second half of the month i will get to those but unfortunately they didn't really help me that much in deciding my tbr for the pokemonathon the desertathon and the squash that series first i'm gonna talk about the books i plan on reading for the pokemonathon i'm team turtwig the grass team that's why i have a bit of a green light on me right now in the pokemonathon there are eight main prompts then there are three team specific prompts and also you get bonus points for reading books featuring animals like animal companions and similar. For the main prompts you are allowed to double up once and I really try to do that because I'm basically going from barely reading anything in October to planning to read a bunch in November which I'm super excited about and I think I will have more time for reading because I have now finally moved, I will have my own space, I have my own time, like there will be time for me to read. And for every main prompt, there are actually two options, like two ways you could go, which is really sweet of her. And so many of these prompts are quite punny and fun. The first prompt is rock. And here you can either read a heavy book or a book that somehow relates to music. I have decided to go for heavy book because I don't have any music related books. Unfortunately, none of my randomized books were heavy enough. I personally consider a heavy or big book to be over 500 pages. So the book I plan on reading for the rock prompt is The Winners by Fredrik Bachmann. I actually don't know if this is the official title, but this is the third book in the Beer Town series. It was just released this month in Swedish. In Swedish it's called Vinnarna which translates to the winners. It hasn't been released in English yet. I'm not sure when it will be. I think next year during the spring and I don't know what the title for that one will be. But I have the Swedish translation. Obviously you might know I love Fredrik Bachmann. I love him and I love his writing. I love his books. I love this series. I just read the second book, like the book previous to this one. I pre-ordered this copy and I bought it signed. It's so cool and it's signed and it also has this stamp, which is like a beer town stamp. The third and final book in the series. I'm sure it will break my heart. I don't have that much time to go through each book, unfortunately, because I, I will be talking about a lot of books. The next prompt is grass and here you could either go for a light book or a book that has flowers and or nature on the cover. I decided to go for the light prompt and for me a light book is less than 300 pages. So I'm going for The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Probably I I'm pretty certain the shortest book on my physical TBR. I've also borrowed this one from a friend. It's the same friend who I borrowed Beach Read from, so might as well return them both at the same time. This is less than 300 pages and I'm super excited about it and I need to read it this year for my Goodreads reading challenge. The next prompt is fighting and here you could go for either a debut novel or a book featuring enemies to lover. I've decided to go for enemies to lover and I plan on reading A Song of Raids and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. From what I understand it's basically about these two main characters where one needs to kill the other character. It's about Malik whose younger sister gets abducted and in order to get her back he needs to kill the crown princess of Siran. Meanwhile Karina, who I'm guessing is the crown princess, has some other sort of quest in mind. There will most likely be sparks from what I understand. I'm excited about this one, it's been on my TBR for a while 
and I'm happy I'm finally getting to it. The next prompt is water and here you could either go for a book that you think will make you cry or you could just keep swimming which means continue with a series. I could easily go for the Friedrich Bachmann book for making me cry. I'm fairly certain it will. Most of his books makes me cry, but I'm saving that one for another prompt. Instead, I'm gonna continue with a series, and the series I plan on continuing with is The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. This is the second book in the series. As I said, I'm reading this for a read-along. I need to read this one in November nevertheless, so it's perfect that I can squeeze it in to this read-a-thon. The next prompt is Ghost. Here you could either read a book featuring something paranormal and and supernatural or you could read a book that you have ghosted like a previous dnf i technically have not dnf this book but i have not picked it up since i started it in june i think i don't read really dnf books i just have keep them as currently reading but they are technically in some ways dnf i guess i'm gonna count this one that book is muse of nightmares by laney taylor the second book in the strange the dreamer series i really enjoyed strange the dreamer not such a huge fan of this one, unfortunately. I read like 30% of it, so I'm a third through it actually. But it's just a bit more boring. Nothing's really happening. Like the first 100 pages, just seriously, nothing happens. I don't really remember that much, but I don't think I will reread the pages I've started to read. I'm just gonna continue with it. I hope it's okay. Next prompt is Steal. And here you could either read a book from an author you love or a book you think will steal your heart. So a five star prediction. I'll give you a few seconds to guess what book I will read for this prompt. You probably guessed correctly because the book I plan on reading for this challenge or prompt is the Fredrik Bachmann book, the third book in the Beer Town series, Vinana, the winners. As I said, I love Fredrik Bachmann, I love his books. My favorite author, of course, I'm reading this one for this prompt. It's the obvious choice. Then we have the ice prompt. Here you could either read a book that slit your mind, haha, uh -huh, punny, or a book with a cold-hearted character. I've decided to go for the slit my mind prompt, and for that one I plan on reading a Song of Race and Ruin, yes, I'm doubling up on this one. As I said, I bought it last year, I was so excited about it. And then for some reason, I never got to it. It's been slipping my mind, basically. And then finally, the eighth main prompt is electric. And here you could either read an ebook or audiobook, or read a book that was an impulse buy. For this one, I plan on reading The Deal by L. Kennedy. So as you know, this was my ebook choice for my randomizing my TBR. So this one actually fits quite perfectly. As I mentioned, there are also team specific prompts. And the first team challenge is basically to read books featuring the color green. At least for my team, the grass team. Barely any of the books I picked are green. <laughs> I feel like I won't do so well for my team and I apologize in advance. The ones I do have on my TBR that are green or features the green color are A Song of Race and Ruin, The Deal by L. Kennedy. Also, we have The Midnight Library. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a tad bit of green in here. So I'm a, I'm a count it. I'm really stretching it. Then there is a challenge to read books featuring like nature words in the title, grass, trees, flowers, words like that. None of the books I've decided to go for have any of those words. So, so far I'm not fulfilling this challenge, which is fine. It's then the third and final team challenge is to read a book with a grass setting. A book that is somehow either set in like the forest or in nature or something along those lines. Once again, I don't really have that many books that fit this particular challenge, but I have one. And that one is Vinana by Fredrik Bachmann. This entire series takes place in a small town in like the northern parts of Sweden. And it's just a small town in the woods. So I know that the setting for this one is very grassy. I guess. And then if we consider the animal companion bonus prompt thingy. Once again, I don't have any books on my current TBR that fits. But perhaps once I read those books, there will be animals featured. At the current time, I don't know if there's animals in my books. So at the current time, I plan on reading six books for the Pokemon-a-thon. Moving on to the Desert-a-thon. Esme made this little like map and the desert of Han features five different prompts and i think it's recommended that you actually aim for going for all five that's how you win the readathon she mentioned something about some bonus prompts that will be revealed later on once again i'm not too certain about the rules for this readathon regarding books you've started for the red cover i do plan on counting muse of nightmares by laini taylor obviously a very red cover and 
one of the few read books I had. There's also a prompt of reading a book featuring a journey. For this one, I do plan on counting The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. I'm not too certain because this is a sequel to a book I'm still currently reading, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen, obviously. The first book is about a woman who goes on a quest or journey to find her kidnapped daughter. And from what I gather from this little description on the back, she still has not found her daughter, so she is still on this quest and journey. So I'm a, I'm a count this one. I think that works out. Then there's a challenge of reading a book featuring magic. And this is quite general, like magic in any way, shape or form basically. And here I plan on reading The Midnight Library. This is a contemporary but with magical elements because it's about this girl who goes into this midnight library and is given the chance to live each of her lives representing like different paths. Her life could have taken. There's something magical in this book. The fourth prompt for the Desertathon is to read a cozy read. For this one I'm going to count Beach Read by Emily Henry. Contemporary, romance, I think it can be a good time. I've heard very different reviews on this one though. For me a cozy read is like a simple read, a good time, something I can read fairly quickly. I think this one will work out for that. And then of course the fifth prompt, that's also like the main prompt of this readathon, is to read a book with a desert vibe. I realized that I could definitely go for A Song of Rates and Ruin. It says here in the description that it takes part in a desert city. I just realized that and I'm adding it to my TBR now. But what I had been planning on doing and what I still might do is I might buy The Wrath and the Dawn by Rene Adier. This is basically Esme's favorite book of all time and it's like the desert vibe book apparently. I do want to read it nevertheless, especially because it's one of Esme's favorites. It's the perfect time to read it during the desert of fun. I'm probably gonna order The Wrath and the Dawn today actually. I'm doing it for you Esme. So those are the books I plan on reading for the desert of fun. The thing to consider with this readathon is that it does matter in which order you read the books. As you might see on the map the different prompts are connected. So you can only go to the other prompts that are connected. So it sort of affects your choice and that's definitely something I have to remember. That's the TBR for the Desertathon and I just realized I did not want the green light for this. Damn it, I forgot. Of course, for the Desertathon I wanted the red light. Freaky the frack, sorry. Okay, and then there's the Squash That Series Weekend Edition Readathon that I do hope to participate in. As I said, there's this bingo board. You are allowed to double up once. So you can read one book and finish the readathon basically because you have that free space in the middle. I think that's what I will go for. I'm not too certain what books I will read yet. It also depends on what books I manage to read during the Pokemonathon and the Desertathon because those are happening before the Squash That Series readathon. But one book that is like my main goal, the one book I want to read during this weekend is none other than A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. I can't believe it myself that I'm holding this one up. I read A Court of Thorns and Roses, Akotar, last year in October or November. I was like not the biggest fan of the book, so I did not really plan on continuing with the series, but I saw the other day that my library had this one and I picked it up on a whim and now I have it in my hands and I've heard that this one is people's favorite book in the series, probably because there's a lot of smut in it and romance from what I understand. But what I'm most curious about is how the entire Tamlin Rise and Fairy thing goes on. Because in the first book, it was obviously Feyre and Tamlin. I know that once this book starts and this series continues, that it will be all about Resand and Feyre. I'm actually quite curious, like how does that happen? This one is a sequel, so I'm gonna count this one for a second book in a series and also for sequel on TBR the longest. I'm not certain if that is entirely true. I read the first book one year ago, so it's sort of been on my TBR for one year. It's a chunky book. It's like it's over 600 pages. If I finish this one within 72 hours that will be quite awesome actually. And I think that's it for this video actually. I randomized my TBR and I planned my TBR for three different readathons. How many books are in total on my TBR? Let me have a quick check. I'd say either 10 or 11 books on my November TBR. It depends on whether I go for 
The Breath and the Dawn for the Desert Fire book, or if I just read A Song of Rage and Ruin, because that's a double up between readathons. I'm honestly super excited about these readathons. I'm excited to get back into reading, and like now when I'm in my new apartment, I'm excited about getting a reading routine in here and having like my reading nook and like laying down in my sofa and read a book or something. Thank you so, so, so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoy. Please take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye! Don't think about what comes.